is Carly Bigelow. I'm here doing the French horn audition tutorial for the Ontario Provincial Honor Band. So before we begin playing, I just want to talk a little bit about breathing. Um, it's very important that you take a really full, deep breath because it's going to help with your tone, it's going to help with endurance, it's going to help with so many different things. So when you're breathing, I'm sure everybody, you've all heard that you should use your stomach when you breathe. And that's true. Um, when I think about breathing, I like to think about relaxing the jaw. You want to relax your throat as well. If you get any sounds like, like any of those restriction sounds, you know you're not completely relaxed. Um, and when you inhale, you want to think about expanding every single direction. So when I breathe in, I like to think about my back coming out. I like to think about my sides coming out, like my front coming out, and even my chest opening up. So you want to be able to get in as much air and fill it to like max capacity as fast as possible. A little trick I've learned is um, this is the top of just a water bottle. If you just cut off the top, and if you breathe through this, you find that you're able to like fill up so fast. And for me, like that's the ideal breath. I have no idea why this works, but it really does. So if you have a plastic water bottle at home, I'd suggest just cutting off the top and giving that a go. Okay, so now let's get into some of the playing. So the first thing you're gonna do on your audition is you're going to record your scales. And the first scale up is an F chromatic scale. I find when learning scales, it's really important to start practicing them slowly. And that way you can build a really strong foundation and then speed them up gradually over time. So this one is F chromatic scale. I always play that lower F on the thumb key. It's so on the B flat side and then switch over to the F side. And the first octave. So what you want to do is you want to take a really big deep breath because it's going to help with your tone. It's going to help with um, playing high. It's going to help with so many things. And you want to play really, really, really slowly. Get, think about like each note before you play it. And then through time, you'll be able just to like play it really fast without thinking. So here's the first octave. So things to think about is when you're going up to the high F, you really want to think about speeding the air up. You want to think about having really good uh, support. And that way your sound will be nice up in the high range. You'll be able to get those notes effortlessly. So the next scale you have to play is the G major scale. And this one's different because it's tongued. So instead of having this nice legato slur, you're gonna make like a toe sound. And you really wanna work on getting um, like the beginning of the notes clear. And a good way to practice this is with air attacks or with uh, like isolating them, just making sure you get a really nice ping at the beginning. So I'm gonna take a deep breath. I'm going to think about the notes, so I want to really start practicing it slowly at the beginning. And um, when you crescendo in the high range, when you think about speeding the air up, you'll get like a really big sound, but if you don't, sometimes you'll get a bit of a pinch sound, and that's something to watch out for. Like, listen to yourself. Am I, do I sound good in all registers? Because that's something we easily forget when we're working on technique. We forget about making a nice sound or about how we sound to the audience. We're so wrapped up in what our fingers are doing. So the next scale is you have the one octave or the two octave option. The first octave, this is the first octave. And for the next octave, it's quite high, so things that I would suggest practicing, I'd practice it slurred at first. This way you're ensuring that your air's flowing through the instrument. Sometimes when you add the tongue, it can get, uh, like, you can cut off the airflow. So a good way to practice it, just slur up to that high B flat. And you really want to think about, like, inflating those high notes. Because if you don't, sometimes you'll get a bit of a pinch sound, and it'll sound kind of like this. Like you're still hitting the notes, but it sounds kind of smaller, kind of shrill out there. And then after practicing it slurred, then you can add in the tongue and make um, the whole scale. And I would recommend practicing 
um, the two octaves. And then when it comes time to recording, if you're still not up there yet, maybe don't put it on the tape. But definitely in the beginning, practice getting up there will only improve your range. And that can't be a bad thing. So let's move on to some of the excerpts. So the first excerpt is Etude A. And this is Paul Ducat's Villanelle. It's a very standard horn rep piece. If you go on YouTube and just type in like Villanelle horn or buy it on iTunes, then you can listen to it. And actually, Etude C is also from this piece. So you can listen to both these excerpts. Um, this opening, it's very, it's very quiet. It's, it says here like piano expressivo, and I like to think of it like distant horn. Like you can hear it, but it's very, very, very far away. And some things for just excerpts in general is what you have to do and what they're going to be listening for is can you keep time? They're going to want to hear your internal rhythm. So I always count myself in, and as I'm playing, I always like keep this. For this one, I'll keep a one, two, three, four, five, six. Just always going in my head, so I can, so I try and keep it as consistent as possible. So I'm going to play the opening. So again, you want to keep this whole opening very like piano, very distant, very lyrical. is mezzo forte. So what you want to do is you really want to bring it out. It's more, I think of it like the horn's closer now. And again, you want to have this kind of like, kind of a singing style for this opening. start mezzo forte again so the same dynamic as before bar 10 but just at the end there's a diminuendo so you just want to like come away a bit kind of taper off the phrase and then again that's the opening of the villanelle so you can by recordings, listen to all the different styles of it. This next one, Etude B, is Mozart's Concert Rondo. And this one is very different from the first one. This one is very, it's kind of like joyous. It's like you have all these forte staccato. So you're gonna wanna make really like crisp articulations. You're gonna wanna make it sound bouncy. Um, a good way to practice this is practicing it with air attack. So you get that very like crisp Mozart sound. And again, as always, I'm going to take a really big breath and I'm going to count myself in. Just try and keep it as steady as possible. In here at bar eight, you have a subito piano. So what you want to do is you want to come away like as fast as possible. And you want to crescendo into the forte, which is in bar 11. So really build up until that point. And at the end you want to have those two short notes followed by one long to make it sound very final. And if you watch, I throw in a lot of B flat fingerings for this one. I find it's a little bit easier for clarity. So um, I play B flat on thumb and one, and then F I'll play on just thumb, and then the D I'm playing on three and thumb. So it's a little cheat, may help. So tips for this one, try and make it sound, it's Mozart, so it always has to sound like effortless, even though it's quite challenging. You wanna create this air of, oh, this is easy and joyous. Um, you really wanna have these really short, nice, crisp articulations. Always, and again, like take a big breath, count yourself in, try and make it as steady as possible, and always try and get like all the dynamic changes. Okay, let's move on to A2C. So this one is um, 
This is also from Villanelle, as I said, this is kind of after that very soft, distant opening statement. And this one's in, it changes from 6-8 to cut time. In this opening, it's very, it's forte. I always think of it kind of like athletic sounding. You want it to sound big and bold. And for these runs, I'd recommend practicing them like very, very, very slowly at first and then working them out. That way you won't be tripping over certain notes. You'll have like, it'll really be in your fingers. And here, just like in the Mozart Rondo, we have another Sabido piano with staccato. So what you want to do is you really want to bring the dynamic level down and then build it back up until the forte again. And I like to make these really short so it like kind of this contrast to this very broad soaring opening. And that part, I don't know about for you, but this part is the hardest part of the excerpt for me. Um, you have these accents, you have these huge leaps. So one way to practice this is with slurs. I find it's easier to hit pitches and kind of get the airflow going if you slur it. So what I would recommend doing is just starting on the G and slurring up to the D and back down to the G, then up to the high G, like this. And then you'll add like a slight tongue. And then you'll go ahead and add these accents. Um, and then we move on to these quarter note triplets. And this is just kind of like a big run up until the end. And at the end you have a split part. You have the option of going up to the C or the option of going down to the pedal C. A good way to practice going down into those like pedal ranges is slurring them. So starting on the G and just lipping it down. <laughs> And really think about like glissing it down to that C. And practice it this way, and if it's not there for the recording, we'll then just go up to the middle C. But this is the end. It should be a really big build into that, hopefully, pedal C. So that's, that's your audition. Um, things to think about again. Always take a really big breath. Always keep time in your head. And I would give yourself lots of time for the actual recording. Um, usually, if you record it and then you listen to yourself, you find that you're doing all these things you didn't know or you thought this forte was a lot louder than you're actually playing it. So maybe I'd give myself maybe two weeks to start recording so you'll find you'll really start teaching yourself and you'll really start improving that way. But I wish you all the best on your Honor Band audition. And yes, good luck. Thank you. Oh, I don't